Yellowstone Supervolcano Quake Alert. The park has been rocked by 121 quakes in the last 28 days and also yesterday at 3.5 west of the caldera. What does that mean? Is eruption near? Let's remember we had the unexpected White Island volcano eruption in uh, New Zealand that had an uptick in activity. They did not believe it would erupt and it did, explosively and unexpectedly. Now Yellowstone Volcano alert. The 3.5 earthquake that struck was not reported in the latest Caldera Chronicles. I, I, I assume it's because they had already written the text and that quake happened a few hours before the Caldera Chronicles announcement came out on Yellowstone's webpage. Perhaps next week they'll refer to that one because that's quite big. Now, the U.S. Geological Survey statistics shows 121 earthquakes rocked the park in the past 28 days. The tremors, relatively small, the largest of them being December 15th, the magnitude 3.5. It hit the area just outside of the border of Wyoming, but it's, of course, the uh, supervolcano area. And it was, from what I remember, uh, let's go to that again, sorry. I have to go back to that. That was the 3.5 was at a 17 kilometer depth. So that was not shallow. Let's remember, and we had an earthquake swarm as well. After that, we had 18 kilometer depth of 0 0.6 magnitude. And we also had other ones, a 6 point uh, magnitude at 19 kilometers depth. The same day, of course, 20.4 kilometers depth, 0.7. That was an earthquake swarm uh, just outside of the uh, Yellowstone Lake. And we'll, we'll see that together. But um, that was uh, 3.5 and deep. We remember that the roof of the magma chamber is only three miles down. And uh, obviously these are pretty deep. So I don't understand. Perhaps they'll have the um, details on that and we'll refer to that in the next Caldera Chronicles. They don't always refer to big quakes. Let's remember last April, we had a 4.5 in uh, Montana. They never even referred to that. And uh, that's quite a, um, a big earthquake for the Yellow Yellowstone area. So the 3.5 was at uh, 17, 18 kilometers depth. Experts warn it's not necessarily the size of the earthquake, which is an indicator of the volcano that uh, could be ready to erupt but the quantity of the earthquakes. Portland State University geology professor Emeritus Scott Burns said, if you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. Okay, well, we know that it's not just magma. We do have magma under there. It's a hot spot, but we also have hydrothermal energy, and the hydrothermal eruptions could be quite dangerous because let's remember the White Island Volcano was a hydrothermal eruption. It was water, uh, the island is, was very low-lying, the water was seeping into the crater and it was superheated and it had to get out somewhere because of the fact that it was steam and it was like a pressure cooker and it just let out and that could be the hydrothermal explosions could be of course very dangerous as well as we see in White Island in um, New Zealand. So uh, we, do, we have the 60% uh, of the world's geysers in Yellowstone and 10,000 hydrothermal areas, 10,000. New uh, hotspots as well, new uh, areas that have uh, thermal activity, meaning that something of course is uh, coming up there and heating the area. That's the new areas that they found northwest of the caldera. We'll see that on the map. Now, others disagree with Professor Scott Burns. 
about whether an earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Jamie Farrell uh, of the University of Utah, Salt Lake City, he says he believes it's just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone. He says earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There is no indication, he says, that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. Shallow crust. Shallow crust. Let's remember those words. Yellowstone supervolcano, as we know, is uh, on the northwest area of Wyoming. And it also overlaps into Montana and Idaho. The 3.5 was just outside of the border, as we'll see, um, in Idaho, at the south of Hebgen Lake, which had the 7.3 erupt uh, earthquake in uh, 1959. Yellowstone super eruptions last erupted uh, 640,000 years ago. And then we had a major eruption 70,000 years ago and 80 eruptions since then. According to the USGS, the chances of a Yellowstone eruption is around 1 in 730,000. With 640,000 years passed since the last major super eruption, Yellowstone, as we see, is of course edging closer to exploding, but it could be thousands of years away yet. Experts are preparing for the worst now, and they are, they are studying how to how a major eruption, which could instantly wipe out swaths of U.S., could be prevented. And we know that NASA has already come out uh, suggesting one way they found to stop such an eruption was, would be by feeding cold water into the magma chambers, or that is near the magma chambers. NASA engineer Brian Wilcox wants to stave off such a super eruption by cooling down the magma in the chambers of the volcano. Around 60 to 70 percent of the heat generated by Yellowstone goes into the atmosphere. But the remainder builds up inside, and if enough builds up, it can trigger an eruption. And he says by drilling 10 kilometers into Yellowstone, NASA feels that uh, it could be possible to pump high-pressure water, allowing the cool liquid to absorb some of the heat before it's pumped back out again. And this would cost uh, about $3.5 billion to do. The proposal would have added benefit of using the steam from the water and magma combo to create geothermal electricity. In other words, he would have a geothermal plant there, just like they have in Kosovo Volcanic Field, Sultan Buttes, the geysers, even Long Valley Caldera Supervolcano has the Casa de... Um, the, uh, I forget the name of it. Anyway, the geysers have the biggest, in California, have the, is the biggest geothermal plant in the world. Now, Wilcox told Mr. Walsh that uh, the thing that makes Yellowstone the force of nature is that it stores heat for thousands and thousands of years before it all goes exploding all at once. And it would be good if we drained away some of that heat before it could do a lot of major damage. Now, others are not convinced about this feasibility. USGS scientist Jake Lomastern told Walsh that it all seems a bit fanciful, whereas the geologist in charge of Yellowstone currently, Michael Poland, who comes out with a lot of the Caldera Chronicle, says as long as I'm in charge of Yellowstone, no one's going to touch Yellowstone because we could end up creating an explosion, what we're trying to stop. Now, let's go and see what's happening there. We can uh, take a look at the maps. Okay, so here we are at Sizemo Berkeley. This is our map of the area where we had 3.5 right there on the 15th, 3.5 Old Faithful Geyser, Wyoming. That's not Old Faithful. It's basically west of Old Faithful, Old Faithful somewhere up here. But anyway, that's what they... Uh, all right, let's go and see what, what's happening there. How many people felt it? Okay, five people felt it. And we have to realize that there's hardly anybody living there, as we'll see. This is it right here. Let's go to the... Uh, okay, let's go here. And uh, as you can see, it's right outside of the border of the, of the state of Wyoming. Let's go to the aerial. You can see better. Okay. This is Yellowstone Lake. That's Hebgen Lake, but let's go inside a little bit more. There you go. Okay. 
This is Yellowstone Lake. This is the caldera area. You can see some of the outline of it right there. This is the caldera area. And this is Hebgen Lake, where we had the 7.5, 3, 7 7.5, 1959 earthquake. And the geologists said a lot of these uh, quake swarms that we're having now could be delayed aftershocks from that quake because that was so strong. So this is it right here. And let's go to our population density. You can see there's nobody there, really. Especially now that it's winter, it is so bleak and snowy and cold that uh, you, you don't see anybody visiting Yellowstone. First of all, all the pathways are covered with snow. They could be slippery, very cold, very uh, icy. It's very high elevation. The, you could, uh, the boiling point of water is less than 100 degrees Celsius, like 97 point something because it's so high. The altitude is so high. So that's the area right there. Okay, no population whatsoever. And um, they don't have all the quakes uh, plotted here, just some major ones. Uh, they, don't, they don't even have the 7.5 of Hebgen Lake uh, plotted there. That's surprising as well. Okay, let's go back to the map. That's it. That's 17 kilometers depth. Okay. Uh, three miles down would be five kilometers depth, so that's about 10, 15, 15, 9, 10, 12 kilometers down. Then you had the other one after that, the same day, 18 kilometers depth, right? And so the same day, and again the same day, 19 kilometers depth, and uh, in the same area, and this one here, 20.4 kilometers depth. So this is a quake swarm. This is a quake swarm of those four um, earthquakes. Okay, this is, this is the area of the new hot spot that they found where they had the burnt charcoal trees. Okay, this is today's quake. This is uh, very uh, shallow, as you can see. These are very shallow. And this is another quake swarm here as well. Okay, that's Old Faithful Geyser. They call it this Old Faithful, that's, this is Old Faithful Geyser area. That's very shallow. And there's something bigger back there. Let's see. Um, what's that one? That's 3.4 again on the, so that's 3.4 on the 15th. Okay. And the other one was 3.5 on the 15th. So we had two uh, pretty big areas. Did anybody feel this one? Let's see. Let's see if anybody felt that one. One person reported feeling it. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.